30-minute reviews, beware of spoilers, and exploring hyperspace lanes are all available ad-free. But if you want to support the show, you can go to bewareofspoilers.com and click the support button that's available on the Spotify website. Thank you. Good morning, and welcome to Beware of Spoilers. I am Adam. Today, we're going to talk about X-Men 97. I know we usually do the Bad Batch on uh, Thursdays, but we're going to do X-Men 97 today, uh, and let me explain why. I have grown out of love with the Bad Batch, um, so I've kind of, like, I, it came out and I was like, oh, well, I want to watch this, and then it's like, Right next to it is X-Men 97 is on, and I'm like, all right, I will watch X-Men 97 instead. Um, and tomorrow I will watch, you know, The Bad Batch. I forgot this week we also have Knuckles, and there's one other show that was dumping all at once this week. Oh, uh, Dead Boy Detectives is also dumping all at once this week. We have a lot to catch up on. Um, and Fallout still. Oof. Um... Maybe just Sunday I'll just marathon through some shit uh, and call it, then that'll just be my day. Um, but regardless, here we are with X-Men 97. Now, the reason why I want to talk about this is because this, this episode kind of gets to the heart of some of my issues with the X-Men comics in general. And I've heard some explanation for this, and, you know, I get it. Like... I get what they're doing, and I understand why it is that they're, you know, that they do this. The The idea that, you know, mutants are something that are feared um, in the Marvel Universe, um, to the degree that they are, is something that's always kind of baffled me, because it's like, you have a world where you have a guy who, you know, who has a sentient suit of armor, like, he's fine. You have super soldiers being created by the government. They're fine. You have this guy who got bitten by a radioactive spider and swings around the city and, 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 and beats up bad guys. That's all fine. But it's also the fact that, like, they all have their own little rogues gallery. Like, you have your, you know, like... Like, for every suit of armor that, that Tony Stark makes, there are 75 other guys who are like, let me make my own suit of armor. Like, and, and, and challenge him. Like, that was kind of the fundamental conceit of the MCU Civil War, is that our existence, the, the quote is, our existence invites challenge. So, okay, so that happened, and yeah, there have been times where people have, where the public in, in Marvel, Marvel Comics has reacted kind of negatively to the heroes, and, and like, we see that, that's what leads to Civil War the first time. Um... Is the idea that they're just kind of running around without regulation, and, and what's you know what 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 comes of this? Um, the issue I have is that that all happens, but the mutants are the ones that everyone's afraid of. Um, and I get it; the mutants are there to be an allegory for racism, for homophobia, for transphobia, for you know Islamophobia, for whatever you know whatever social you know, like, so, like, uh, civil rights issue is relevant, the, the mutants are there to stand in for the marginalized group, and that's what it's an allegory for, and it's been that way since Stan Lee was writing the team, back in the, what was it, the 70s they introduced them, late 60s, early 70s they introduced the X-Men, um, I wasn't, wouldn't be alive for another 20 years, so the exact year escapes me, um, it's a good idea, but when you try to fit that into the broader universe, it feels a little weird. And they, they differentiate, like, well, someone like Spider-Man who gets their powers after they're born is a mutate. Um, like, their, power, their, their powers have mutated. They're a mutate instead of a mutant. A mutant is someone who's born with these powers. A, 
a an inhuman is someone who has to go through terrorogenesis, and that's an entirely different thing. The 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 whole thing feels kind of weird, and and going along with that, there has been this trend among X Men writers over the course of the decades to write characters that aren't mutants out of character to make the mutants look better. And when I'm... Obviously, if you've watched this episode, you know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the the way that Captain America was handled in here. Captain America shows up, and he showed up in the original show, too. The original show had a handful of cameos um, as I'm watching through it. Like, Doctor Strange shows up, and uh, who was the other one? Um, Punisher shows up at one point. There are, you know, there are a lot of things like that. Um, that is a very weird police car. Um, so, like, yeah, they show up from time to time, do their business, and, and move on. So, you know, because it is, like, X-Men 97, the X-Men animated series took place kind of in the broader Marvel Universe, but it really only focused on the X-Men. And it's the same thing, I mean, it's a continuation, so obviously the same thing applies. So Captain America is here, and he doesn't try to stop Rogue, but he's like, look, we gotta do this by the book. Now, forgetting the MCU, because the MCU is a recent development, like the idea that Captain America is not the guy who's gonna do things by the book. One of the most famous Captain America panels that people have seen, and I think if you ask someone who's, who's seen it, who, about Captain America, there, there are a few that stand out. There was one, I want to say, from the 40s, maybe the 60s, when they revived, when they brought Captain America back, but where he says, you know, the, the flag means nothing unless we stand up for what it means without our convictions. I mean, it means nothing, or it's something along those lines. And it was when he, there was an imposter Captain America, and he had to prove he was the real one. Um, then you have, you know, the fact that he, in the 80s, under the, was, was it, no, it was the 70s under Nixon, and then again in the 80s under Reagan, um, Steve Rogers, you know, quit as Captain America and became Nomad, which became the, you know, costume inspiration for, what's it called, for, uh, for, you know, Infinity War Captain America. Um, it's in, like, I, because the, because fundamentally Captain America was diametrically opposed to what was going on in the American government, and he could not stand for that and act as an agent on their behalf. It, it's it's something that like when that happens, it's like okay, you know, he will stand up and he will do what's right, and not just be government toady. Otherwise, it's just he, he's just U.S. agent or 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 any number of other. Captain America adjacent super soldiers that were attempted to be created in the aftermath, um, and, or Patriot, or who was the other one, um, uh, Nuke was another one who was a, a Captain America, you know, like character who was created to, uh, what's it called, to, uh, attempt to rebuild the, the super soldier program. It's, it's just all of these things where it's like, why are we writing him like this? And, and look, it leads to a, a funny moment, a great moment with Rogue, where Rogue just grabs his shield and just fucking chucks it, like, into a mountain range. Like, it leads to a good moment for Rogue, but at the same time, it's the same thing we've been doing with the X-Men forever. We are taking the characters outside the X-Men and writing them out of character. Because in this situation where Captain America is, 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 is doing what he's, what he's, you know, what he's doing, and look, I, I get it, it's not, like, there is context to the scene of this and a little bit where he's like, look, I'm not gonna, you know, like, obviously, he's like, I'm not gonna stop you, I mean, and, and honestly, like, what's he gonna do against Rogue, there's nothing really he can do, um, cause, like, Rogue would just tear through all my tissue paper if it really came to it, but, it, it's one of those things where it's like, I, I don't particularly care for the way they handled that, um, and I don't particularly care for the way it kind of happens, 
you know, across X-Men comics. Because it is not isolated to this show. This is an issue that's been pervasive uh, for a long time in X-Men comics. On top of that, uh, that said, I did really like the ending. I love Rogue being able to confront the person who created the Sentinels. And rather than, you know, rather than show mercy, because, like, no, that would make you just as bad as, as, as them if you kill them. She's like, well, no, fuck, fuck him. Like, he killed, like, she just fucking murders him. And look, this is gonna lead to issues. This, this episode is very much, and, and, and the first seven episodes, we're now at episode seven and ten, is, is building up to what the end of this show is going to be. Um, but we, I think we're headed for a confrontation with the Shi'ar coming. I think we're headed to a, you know, with, with a, what's it called, to a confrontation with, um, you know, the humans and the mutants conflict is going to come to a head, uh, and, and it's going to be interesting to see how these things intersect in these last three episodes, um, and if everyone comes out of it alive. That's going to be the big question that I have, is does everyone come out of this alive? Um, I don't think so. I'm going to be honest, I don't think that, you know, we, we leave this in a happy place. Um, there's also a season two confirmed, which, you know, could mean anything, but I don't think we're, we're walking out of this season with even as many X-Men as we have right now, where we're already down, we're already down Gambit and we're down uh, Magneto. I think we're, we aren't, you know, we're not leaving here with the same thing. And the other thing is, I think if we're getting a season two, we haven't seen that many Brotherhood characters this season. Like, we haven't seen that many evil mutants. Like, even Magneto has been in the show, but Magneto was siding with the X-Men. So at what point is that what season two is about? Is season two us going... Okay, let's introduce, you know, all of the, you know, let, let's reintroduce Juggernaut. Let's reintroduce all of these other ones. And I'm like, all right, let's see where this goes. And, and the, the other, one other big thing that I have is, we haven't seen Deadpool in this show. Uh, Deadpool was in the original. Um, if Deadpool shows up in a later season, does Ryan Reynolds voice Deadpool? And I think the answer has to be yes. Because I think at this point, people have kind of, you know, put Ryan Reynolds synonymous with Deadpool. Like, it, it's like, oh, it's like, when people think of Deadpool's voice now, in the same way that, like, a lot of people, when they read comics for Batman, they, like, Batman's, the, the voice they read Batman and his Kevin Conqueror. I've heard that from multiple people. I mean, not the least of which is Kevin Smith. Um, it, it's... It's an interesting question because I think that for a lot... I mean, for me especially, it's like, I hear... When I read that, I read it with Ryan Reynolds' voice. When I read a Deadpool appearance in a comic. So the question that I have is, do we get that same thing and I had an interesting thought just now. This just, this just popped into my head as I'm on my way to work, and I have nothing to say that this is going to happen or not. People have been calling for Emma Stone to reprise her role as Gwen Stacy in the, you know, in, in the, what's it called? In, at, do a Spider-Gwen movie with her, or, and I think she's been like, oh yeah, I would do that. Um, like, do a Spider-Gwen movie or do something like that. What if they have her in Deadpool and Wolverine as Gwenpool? Because we already have, what's it called? We already have, um, we know that we have, you know, the dog Deadpool with the little, you know, the little funny looking dog with the tongue sticking out in the Deadpool costume. We know that. We know we have 
Um, what's it called? We know we have, I think Lady Deadpool is confirmed as well. Um, and we've seen speculation. I, I've seen, I mean, I've seen reported leaks. I don't know how accurate it is. But I've seen reported leaks. The end of the movie is a parody of the final battle for men game. What if it is an army of Deadpools? And that's what it is. I could see that, you know, being the case. And the other thing I was thinking is, like, does this take place before the finale of Loki Season 2? Which, I know time gets a little wonky when you deal with the TVA, but does this take place before that? Because if so, like, does... What's it called? Does, uh... Does Renslayer show up? Because last we saw Renslayer, she got pruned and she's in the void. And she's trying to... She's going to tame, um, Elias, mm-hmm. I think, was the last time we saw her. If that's the case, and that's where we are, and we are now at a point where... She could be a player in this movie. I don't think she'd be a main player. In the same way that, like, look, we have all of these characters who are you know, at the TVA, and none of them are anyone that we have seen, except potentially Hunter B-15, um, I heard could be back. I don't know if that's true or not, but if it is, all right, cool, that's Hunter B-15, and she's, you know, she's like the main hunter. Um, if, if that's the case, then are we dealing with a situation where, you know, could she show up? And, is she a variant of Kang? Because that could be interesting. Like, yeah, we know what she was. We know she was an elementary school teacher. But, she could still be a Kang variant. Like, if she is a variant of Kang, then could she be a, you know, what's it called? Could she be... Could that be what's in this movie? And I'm, I'm, I'm very curious about where they go with this. Um, and I talked about a little bit on, on 30 Minute Reviews, where it's like, the amount of questions that I have about Deadpool and Wolverine that come from Loki is questionable. Um, and, and not questionable in any real sense, more so in the sense of, well, what about, um, you know, the Marvels, where in the Marvels, leading up to it, it's like, oh, I gotta watch two TV shows, I gotta watch WandaVision, which, like, was the first Marvel Studios TV show, so it was the first one that anyone really watched. So, like, everyone fucking watched it. Like, that was a moment in 2021. Um, I was like, oh, we got, you know, I gotta watch WandaVision, I gotta watch Miss Marvel, and, and that's a lot to make to watch to do this. And and then I, I, I genuinely think that that narrative had a sizable impact on the box office. Now, now, now my question is, where is the same attitude towards, you know, Deadpool and Wolverine? Now, I'm not saying it's a legitimate thought process or a legitimate concern, considering it's like, look, it's not like you got to watch these things in a row leading up to it. Or it's like, here's, you know, six hours of TV or eight hours of TV you got to watch to, to, you know, to understand it. No, it's, it's not that at all. It is very clearly, it's like over the course of, now three years because we it took you know 2021 we had Loki 2023 we had um, Loki season two over the course of that three years we had what's it called we had uh, you know you, you watch that and it wasn't even like it was binge it was weekly releases so you had time to to watch and make sure you understood um, the issue is where is that same thing. And, and arguably, from the Marvel's trailer, it was very clear you probably didn't need to know a ton about Miss Marvel to go into this movie. Very clearly, out of this one, you need to know a lot about the lore of Loki, the TV show, not the character, to understand what's going on in this movie, which is a very different situation. But on that note, we will wrap up there for today. Um, until our next episode, which will be tomorrow. Tomorrow we will be doing, um, what was, what was the movie we're doing tomorrow? Um, 
fuck? What was the movie we're doing tomorrow? Oh, Boy Kills World, I think. I don't know. Maybe we'll maybe we'll do it on Sunday, on Saturday. Uh, and then we also have uh, what was the other big movie we got? Uh, the other thing. Oh, Bad Batch. We will wrap up with the Bad Batch or continue with the Bad Batch tomorrow. Until then, have a great rest of your week.